Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Thank you all for joining us on our Belize 102 webinar today. I know a lot of folks are getting logged in right now, but as you know, please do find that question and answer section at the bottom. We'd love to hear what part of the world you're coming in from. Uh, we have folks joining us all the time on our webinars from all over the place. And it's always exciting to see what part of the world you are. So find that Q&A section down below. Um, I know a lot of folks, um, as you're updating your Zoom, you might take a little bit of time to get logged in. Uh, I see Ali here joining us from sunny Belize. Nice to see that, Ali. It's been a really, really nice and beautiful day out here on San Pedro, actually. Um, find that Q&A section down below, folks, as we get started here and let us know what part of the country you're joining in from. I see Daryl is joining in just down from the street in Belize as well. To, um, anonymous attendee from Tony Springfield. Uh, Cindy is joining us from the USA. Hi, Cindy and Steve. Uh, we have here some more folks joining on. Tim joining us. Tim and Laurie joining us from Denver, Colorado. Um, nice to have all of you folks here. Rick from South Carolina. Great. Uh, we have James joining us from Balrico. Nice to have you all on board with us today. So we'll just get started on here as more folks are logging in. Uh, let's jump to the next slide. My name is Michael Fuller. I am the marketing manager here at ECI Development. I've been with the comp company with uh, ECI for a little bit over six months now. It's been such an exciting opportunity learning about our different projects uh, that we have throughout Latin America and just really getting my hands dirty on all that we have available um, in terms of investment opportunities for you folks. Um, I have with me today Gian Rivero, one of mm -hmm. our property consultants consultant at ECI. Gian, would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely, Michael. My name is, as Michael mentioned, my name is Gian Rivero. I am a property consultant here for ECI Development. Uh, I've been with the company since 2020, but since recently, I've decided to go full-time and uh, be able to share with you guys all of the different opportunities we have. Um, I was, before ECI, a manager of a dive shop here in San Pedro and Bergeski. So I'm really, really excited to share with you guys uh, Belize, basically. Thank you, Jian. So as you folks know, we have different opportunities available to you all across Latin America, in Belize, Nicaragua, Honduras, Panama, and soon to come in Costa Rica, Honduras, and different places around Central America. But today we're extremely excited to talk to you all about Belize, specifically San Pedro on Umbergis Key and the different opportunities that we have available to you all. You may see some familiar faces here um, in our leadership team, Mike Cobb and Joel Nagel, who started this company about 26 years ago, um, along with our VP of Marketing and Sales, who you've seen on several many webinars before, Rachel Jensen. Uh, we do have some new faces on the screen here, Michael Beta, our Chief Operations Officer, uh, Val Espinoza, our VP of Operations, and Patrick Hubert, our CDO, our Chief Design Officer, along with other members of our team. It's really, really great. I know there's this, this infographic might be a little bit hard to read, uh, but it's here to show you all that we, our company continues to expand. We have a lot of key team members that we keep bringing on to our team uh, to be able to create quality products for you all. So as our team continues to grow, our organiza organizational chart continues to grow as well. And it's just there to ensure um, that we are delivering the best top tier quality products for you throughout Latin America. So the big question here, find that Q&A section down below again. Um, have you ever been to Belize? So a lot of folks joining us on this webinar today have had Belize on their minds for quite a while, but not a lot of folks have been able to join us in the country. Uh, Belize, especially during the holidays, it's one of the times that a lot of people like to visit the country uh, just because of escaping the cold and enjoying the tropics. So let us know in the Q&A below if you've been here. I see a lot of people are saying yes, yes, yes. Um, 
Oh, that's really, really nice to see. Actually, a lot of you have visited Belize before. I'm seeing some no's. Um, yes, no, it's it's looking like more people have been here <laughs> quite a couple of times. Patty Ellis, nice, nice joining us today, Patty. Um, nice seeing you online um, about 11 or 12 times being in the country. Uh, Jeff being here for about five times. Um, Belize is one of those unique spots and, and we'll get into a little bit more information on why in just a bit. Uh, but a lot of people enjoy visiting the country. And for those that have not been here as yet, we do invite you to join us um, in the near future. So why Belize? Um, there are a couple of topics that we're going to cover today. Um, normally, we have our Belize 101 webinar, which normally goes over a lot more general country information and information on um, what to do and, and, and how to get around um, a key, key information. But with this 102 webinar, we do want to dive into a lot more lifestyle um, opportunities uh, in terms of investment, um, as well as things to do around town, a lot of activities and, and just being in the shoes of somebody living here. Uh, we're going to give you of course, some general statistics, reasons why Belize should be on the top of your mind um, and those activities. And then we'll open up for a question and answer section at the end. Uh, so Belize is just a little shy away from a population of 400,000. It's a really, really small country. Um, but this, what this means is there's a lot of opportunity here in the country. There's a lot of um, untouched land and a lot of developments that are happening. Um, the currency here in Belize, it's a very, very, very easy conversion uh, where one USD equals about two Belize dollars uh, for just about everything that you're um, purchasing. We actually accept both the Belize dollars and the US currency, uh, both as currencies in the country. Yeah. And then also Belize does border Mexico and Guatemala, and it's a rather small country, just under 9,000 miles squared. And if you are from North America and you want to have it as a comparison size, it is just about the size of Massachusetts. Um, we have a representative, a democratic uh, government, and uh, it also has a commonwealth. So we will get into why that is such an important uh, information that you want to know. So the official language of Belize is English. And so this makes it one of the top reasons why folks are wanting to not just travel, but invest in the country. Um, it doesn't take a lot to uh, come in. When you're greeted at the airport, you're greeted with folks that know the English language. It's our, it's our first language. But because we're such a diverse group of people down here, um, most people are multilingual, trilingual. Uh, so if you're ever wanting to chat with somebody in Spanish, Mandarin, Maya, uh, Garifuna, you're able to do so, there's always a friendly face able to help you. But English is uh, one of those um, attractive reasons why folks are wanting to invest in the country, because there's no need to learn a second language. There's no language barrier here. And uh, Belize also has very, very strong and secure banking laws. And so if you've been us, with us for a while, uh, you'll know the history between why Joel Nagel, our co-founder, and Mike came over to Belize. Um, and one of the reasons was because of the strong, strong banking laws in Belize. Um, we have many people looking for offshore banks to hide their assets outside of their country. And uh, Belize is right on top of the very list of uh, places to do that. It's also a country that is uniquely positioned um, in Central America, where uh, you'll find flights from major hubs like Miami, Houston, New York, Toronto, uh, that just takes a couple of hours to get here. From Miami, it's about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, Toronto being the fur furthest port uh, that I mentioned just now is about five hours to get here. So this makes it one of the easiest locations to get to from North America. Um, we're such a diverse group of people, like I mentioned before, you'll find that there are many different ethnicities and cultures here in Belize, the Mestizo, the Creole people, um, a lot of indigenous groups, um, and most people that you meet in the country is some mixture of that. Um, I am a mixture of Mestizo and Creole, for example. Um, so you'll find uh, that there's a lot of different cultural activities, a lot of different um, foods to try, a lot of different things to do um, within these different cultures. And folks here are so friendly and ready to help you immerse yourself within their different cultures. 
uh, Belize also has a growing economy where um, two of our major breadwinners of the country is agriculture and tourism. Um, agriculture coming second to tourism. And we export a lot of food produce, a lot of sugar, a lot of bananas um, outside of the country. Um, and as a result of um, English being a first language here in the country and people wanting to escape the coal and come down to the tropics. It helps the economy grow with tourism um, for folks who are wanting to do a lot of overnight stays and just experience all that Belize has to offer. Uh, Belize also offers a lot of affordable real estate um, in places like Ambergris Key and San Pedro, where you will find a lot of beachfront properties or properties that have water views, ocean views, um, you uh, or even lagoon views. Um, these, if you would position one of these homes or condos in somewhere like California, you're, you're looking at prices in the millions. Uh, in Belize, that is just a fraction of the cost um, with affordable luxury options available to you. Uh, so we do have another poll for you all today. We want to make this as interactive as possible, folks. Um, we want to know uh, how many districts are there in Belize. So earlier, Gian and I, we had a little <laughs> joke about this, um, but do find that Q&A section down below and we will let you know about the joke in just a few. I'm seeing here Rick mentioned six. Uh, James is saying B6, anonymous attendee saying seven. Um, Vernita Williams saying 10. Great. Thank you guys for the answers. Claude, five. So the right answer here is we have six different districts within the country. Uh, the joke that we had earlier is that Ambergris Key is, we like to consider Ambergris Key being its own little district off the side uh, because it's really, really a uh, one of the major players in tourism in the country. Um, so it's, it's almost like its own little district, but it is a part of the Belize district. So there are six different districts available. Um, uh, in the country. Yeah, and so uh, from here, we would talk about three uh, basic points. One would be the return on investment. Um, if you're looking at Belize from an investment point of view, or if you're planning on retiring, um, how you can go about retiring in Belize and also how to live that digital nomad life in Belize. Um, and so the first question that you want to ask yourself is what is it exactly that you're looking for in Belize? Are you looking for a rental property, a steady uh, flow of income, or are you looking at a residential or a lifestyle perspective? Are you planning on coming and living here for most part of the year or for uh, several weeks of the year? Um, and so with that, we'll go into the next slide and we will go into our famous uh, investment curve. And if you've been with us, you know this curve very well. If not, then this is the curve that we do like to say that Belize is right on the sweet spot. It's right in the middle of the curve. And why do we consider it as a sweet spot? And that is because Belize is a very, hasn't plateaued um, in terms of the real estate. So you do have that opportunity to appreciate. Uh, and it also has that steady flow of tourism coming in. Places such as Cancun and uh, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, there uh, has already plateaued um, and they do have a steady income of tourism. Uh, and Nicaragua, if you look lower on the curve, Nicaragua, they have entry level pricing in terms of property and they don't have that steady curve of tourism coming in. And so Belize is right in between that, right on that sweet spot. And uh, this, this is the magic number here, 70%. And why is it a magic number? Well, that's because 70% of the tourism income comes from Ambergis Key. And uh, as an investor, you do want to take a look at that number because if you're investing in a place or in a property, you do want to see where the numbers are. And Ambergis Key, there's, like I said, there's 70% of uh, the tourism coming in through Belize. And so you do want to follow the numbers. You do want to know where that number is. And Ambergis Key, like I said, is, is right there. What's really neat about Ambergis Key too is a lot of the international flights coming into the country. Um, Ambergis Key is one of the second stops that a lot of folks mm -hmm. uh, venture off to first. Um, I know a lot of folks come to the to the country to visit different parts, whether it's island life or mainland, uh, but Ambergris Key is almost always on the top of their mind for a place to visit when, when in Belize. 
And uh, we do have three options or opportunities here in Belize. We have our tiny homes. Uh, we have the first phase already under construction and should be finished hopefully sometime in February. Um, we have also our Best Western and the Marriott residences. Uh, and like I said, when it comes to the numbers, the reason why we have these big brands, these big chains coming over to Belize is because the numbers just make sense. When it comes to the Best Western, we have our fleet already under construction should be finishing up sometime again in, in February. And we are looking into breaking ground for our other building, which is the Galleon building uh, coming up by the end of the year. And also the Belize Marriott residences, these are our uh, beach life, our beachfront property, and it should be breaking ground sometime in the end of the year. And um, uh, we were chatting just earlier with Michael, and we were saying we were up at the top of the fleet building. Um, I was doing a property tour with Rachel and, and Daryl, who's here on the webinar as well. And uh, we were just taking a look at the stunning views from the top of the fleet building. Yeah, you were able to see a lot of the ocean view of the Caribbean Sea right in front of you. Um, if you look really closely, you'll be able to see the Barrier Reef as well. <laughs> yes. uh, but it also gives you a really great view of sunsets on the bay side of the island. Um, so just a 360 wraparound view um, of most of the water um, areas around the island. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking at it from a lifestyle perspective and you want to become a resident of Belize, you're definitely able to do that. Um, uh, one of the residencies that you're able to apply for is the permanent residency. So that's the second one at the bottom. The permanent residency, you can apply at any age and you can or must live in the country for at least a year. You do have 14 days of a grace period that you're able to exit the country and come back in but you do have to be here uh, 50 weeks out of the 52 in the year. After you've received your residency, you are able to work in the country and it can lead to a passport afterwards. And if you're looking into retiring in Belize, the, maybe the QRP program is right for you. You have to be 45 years or over of age to qualify and you do have to spend at least 30 days in the year in the country. Um, you are not able to work as a qualified retired person because you do have to stay retired in Belize if this is the program you're looking for. But one of the key benefits of being in the QRP program is that you are able to bring in your items duty free. Basically, if you have any furniture, anything from home that you want to bring into Belize, you're definitely able to do that duty free. And we also have one more residency that you're able to go for, and then that would be the investor residency. With the investor residency, you do need to invest at least $250,000 into the country, and you are able to add dependents. And if you want more information on how you can get any one of these residencies, please do send us an email at webinar at ecidevelopment.com. And one of my team members will be more than happy to send you more information on these. Now we're at a very special part of today's webinar. We do have a special guest on the line. I'm going to stop sharing my screen here so that she can pop online for you guys real quick. Uh, let's see here. Great. Hey guys, it's Rachel. Hi, Jensen. Rachel. <laughs> you guys have been doing a great job. I've been listening from San Pedro Town. I just uh, popped the squat right over here. Let me turn around so everybody can see where we are. I was really happy to see so many people online with us who have been to Ambergris. Um, someone said 11 times. I know D. Scott and Jeff, you were five times plus. And it's just been really neat to see that a lot of you are looking at learning more about the country, the spots. Um, if you've been on the island before, you may recognize this as one of the most popular breakfast spots on the island because this is your view right out there from it. Also really awesome woodworking, Caliente, another great restaurant over there. But this is this is the central hotspot, folks. This is the central park area. If you are planning to come in by boat, so you, you can see right over there in the distance, you can see my finger, there's a pink and lime green building. That is where the water taxi comes in. So if you are coming in by ferry, instead you will land right over there. If you're coming in by plane, you're about five minutes away from here, but still landing in the heart of San Pedro. And kids enjoying the playground over here today. And just give you another idea of what the view is. And you know, I was very pleased today as uh, we are doing this webinar, and you may know that October is traditionally the rainy time of year here in the country, but as you can see, it is beautiful outside, blue skies, the sunshine, there's the manatee, 
And I did see Michael and Gian that you had a picture that had this sign here. So I wanted just to give everybody the view of it, San Pedro town, as you can see uh, right here in front of you. And then Gian and Michael were talking about diving and snorkeling. And in the distance there, I think you can see my finger in the distance, right in the horizon, that's where the reef is. So you can see you're out there in just a couple of minutes. And you've also heard us talk about golf cart life. I'll just come a little bit closer to the road so you can see what that looks like. A little different uh, than, than North America, that's for sure. And yeah, also the clock really tower. Cool yes, it's stunning out today. Every now and again, you see some cars and taxis, but golf cart life, there's Rita. Golf cart, golf cart uh, life is the way to, uh, to go here. So it's fun if you decide that you want to move or spend some time here, chances are you will pick up a golf cart at some point. Otherwise there are taxis readily available for you. But this is just a sneak peek of what San Pedro looks like. There's so much more to town. We're on Front Street right now. Then there's Middle Street and Back Street beyond that. But uh, yeah, just wanted to give you all a sneak peek and welcome you to San Pedro Life. And we hope to see you here at some point soon. Back to you over there in the office, guys. Thank you so much, Rachel. Okay, guys, let me just get my screen back shared here so that we can continue with the webinar for you folks. So we do want to jump into a lot of the activities that are available, not only on San Pedro, but activities that are available on the mainland. So we're going to go through a several of those with you all now. Yeah, and one of the first ones and probably the most popular one thing that you'll be hearing about in Belize is that you have to do the snorkeling. If you're not a diver and, and you want to jump into the water and take a look at the beautiful sea life that we have, Whole Chan Marine Reserve is the place to do that. Uh, you'll be doing it as a two-part snorkel where you cover Zone A and Zone D of the Whole Chan Marine Reserve. Zone D is where you hear the famous shark and reality where you're able to jump in and swim around with the nurse sharks. And it's a great way that if you're coming by yourself, it's a great experience. If you're coming with family, it's a great experience as well. Um, Michael mentioned that he had done it and uh, one of the must things is to bring a GoPro, right? Yes, absolutely. Make sure that you have, if not a GoPro, a little Ziploc bag for your <laughs> cell phone uh, so that you can go into the water. Just make sure that it's secure. We don't want anybody's uh, electric <laughs> devices getting destroyed by salt water. Uh, but there's a lot to explore under the water. I mean, we hear <laughs> right back to Aero with Under the Sea, uh, yeah. but there's a lot to experience. I remember when we were out um, uh, doing some snorkeling a couple weeks back, we even saw some manatees in the water. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of sea life, sea turtles, manatees, sharks, um, uh, stingrays, a lot of colorful fish. Uh, the parrotfish is one of the most beautiful um, that we've seen down under the sea there. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about some stuff on the mainland. So one of the um, most popular tourist destinations across the country is to visit the Maya ruins. Um, we have Maya ruins scattered all across the country. Um, and some of the most popular ones are listed there for you, Lamanai, Altenha, Sunan, Tanich, Karakol. Um, there's several, like I mentioned, all across. One of my favorite Maya ruins that I've been to um, in the mountain Pine Ridge area, this is in the Cayo district um, on the Western side of Belize. Um, it's actually the biggest, if I'm not mistaken, uh, biggest Maya site in the country, Caracol. Um, and it just really gives you um, a good feel on ancient Maya life and, and what, uh, I just imagine putting myself in there and, and in, in that time and just wondering how beautiful it must have looked then, uh, especially because of how it's still withstanding um, all of the elements and time um, and how it's looking there now. Uh, so Maya ruins are definitely something to go and visit when you're on uh, the mainland in Belize. And coming back to that water and sea theme, one of the most popular things to do as well, if, you, if you're wanting to go into the water, is the sailing and catamaran clubs. Um, now sailing and you're able to go onto a catamaran, it leaves from the island, it goes down, you're able to do a couple of snorkeling along the reef. A uh, quick tip is that, or a quick fun fact is that the Belize has the second largest barrier reef, where it's also known as the Mesoamerican Reef. So it starts off from uh, the coast of Mexico all the way down to about Honduras, and it is the second largest reef. 
within that, there are different points that you're able to stop. Here in San Pedro, you start off at Ambergis here, San Pedro, and you go down to our sister island on one of these catamaran tours that you can see here. And you do stop at Key Cocker. Key Cocker is our sister island, and it's basically a nice very, very laid back. You hear that term a lot here in San Pedro, that island is very laid back. We take our time. Key Cocker is probably twice as laid back as we are. And it's basically a nice, nice uh, way to go and jump into the water and have swim at the split. You'll be hearing that a lot as well. Yeah. Uh, and that's just a quick, easy 30 minute ride away from San Pedro. So if you're ever looking to when you're on the island and wanting something quick to go and visit and do some island hopping and just seeing what life is like um, outside of San Pedro, 30 minutes is a quick and easy trip to go and experience Key Cocker. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a lot of cave tubing and zip lining opportunities available on the mainland. Um, I enjoy doing cave tubing uh, through the different river systems that we have and the different cave systems that we have uh, throughout the country, you're able to, these rivers traverse through the caves. So you're really able to see a lot of the structures within these caves when there's a little bit of peep of the sun um, coming up top um, and seeing a lot of the cave structures uh, from stalagmites to stalagmites. Um, and uh, you're you're able to go on there. There are these little inner tubes that you're floating on. You're always led by a guide, um, but really refreshing cool waters that are coming down from the mountains and hills in the country. Uh, Belize also, like I mentioned, offers a lot of zip lining. Uh, one of the most popular spots is the uh, Angel Falls tours. Uh, so Angel Falls is um, not the Angel Falls that you might, <laughs> might be familiar with, um, uh, but this is one of the um, longest, fastest, and um, tallest zip lines available in the country. We're able to see a lot of wildlife on the tour, um, a lot of monkeys if you're into that. Um, and also able to see a lot of the uh, river systems that are lying below. Yeah. And uh, we get into the diving and the snorkeling. And so, like I said, uh, I was a manager of a dive shop right before I started being full time with ECI development. And so I'm very, very passionate about diving in Belize. And uh, one of the great things about diving in Belize is that most of the dive sites are only about five to 10 minutes away from the island. And so places like Placencia, you've probably been hearing about Placencia too. The dive sites are about an hour, 30 minutes away. Um, when it comes to Belize, they're only five to 10 minutes away and you get to have some of those great uh, spur and groove formations. Some of the popular dive sites would be Tackle Box, Esmeralda, uh, San Pedro Canyon, just to name a few in case you're a diver and planning to come to Belize, be sure to try and get those on your list of things to do and dive in Belize. There's also that really nice cave system that's available under an island. Mm -hmm. So a cave system under Key Cocker and are also able to do um, diving there. So if you want to combine two tours in one <laughs> um, and do diving and cave and, and exploring some caves, you can do that um, off of Key Cocker Island. Um, there's also Secret Beach, which has become over the years a really, really popular destination for folks to just kick back, relax, enjoy a cocktail, enjoy some food, um, some fast foods, um, enjoy miles upon miles of um, really shallow water for you and your entire family to just go and relax in uh, Secret Beach, uh, or as we like to call it here, not so Secret Beach anymore, <laughs> um, is a really, really nice spot. It's a little bit up north um, away from town. Uh, so you're, you are getting away from the hustle and bustle. Um, like I said, it's a really nice spot for you to just go kick back, relax, um, enjoy a picnic and just enjoy um, the refreshing waters there. It's also one of the um, spots on the island to see stunning, really, really stunning sunsets. Um, so we like to venture out there on uh, as often as possible to be able to experience that. And then keeping on the tangent of diving, the Blue Hole is probably what made Belize one of the most premier dive placing in Belize or in the country, in the world. Um, the Blue Hole is about a two hour and a half boat ride from here. And if you're a diver, it's probably one of those things on your bucket list of must do's. It's a really, really great uh, experience to go and dive. The Blue Hole itself, where you do a deep dive to do uh, the stalagmites and the stalactites. Um, and it's a fun fact because the Blue Hole it was believed to be above water at once. And that's how stalagmites and stalactites form. It's an all day trip though. So uh, make sure you get a good night's rest before if you're planning on doing the Blue Hole the following day. 
Uh, skydiving is also available from time to time. It's not a constant that's available in the country, but a lot of skydiving enthusiasts, they like to venture to Belize um, and do actually some skydiving into or, or nearby the Blue Hole. Yeah, into uh, the Blue Hole, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's a, a really next exciting activity for folks to do. Um, the Belize Zoo and the ATM Cave, so these are, again, almost everything that we're talking about here are some of the popular <laughs> um, attractions in the country. But the Belize Zoo, if you're into uh, volunteerism or um, just an animal um, person on a whole, mm. the Belize Zoo is a unique zoo uh, throughout the entire world. It's a zoo that has all rescue animals in there, all animals that have been rehabilitated. Um, and it's an open zoo. It's an open zoo concept. So you're the folks behind the cage most of the time, and the animals get to roam freely um, in their natural habitat. Yeah. And then uh, the ATM cave is also known as Aktun Tunichil Muknal. It's Maya word uh, for the, that's named after the cave. And um, it's quite an adventure. So it's quite a trek up. It's not for the faint of heart. It's those, those that are looking for an adventure that love climbing, that they enjoy uh, hiking. It's quite a bit of a trek to get into the cave. But once you're there, it is quite stunning. Um, you're able to see some of the ancient pottery that's been there for thousands and thousands of years. And um, it's a really, really, really great experience to go and, and venture and see how the Mayas used to take care of the cave and, and live by the cave. So we do have another poll here for you folks. Um, what holiday do we normally celebrate on November 19th? Uh, so find that Q&A section again uh, down below and let us know, uh, based on the options available here, what holiday do you believe we celebrate on November 19th? I see a couple answers in here. Uh, Yaka, B, Ali, B, um, Ivania, everybody's selecting Garifuna Settlement Day. We have somebody saying Belize Independence Day. Most of the answers here are <laughs> correct. It is the Garifuna Settlement Day. So back to us having so many diverse cultures here, we are wanting to be respectful for all of these um, diverse ethnicities and cultures. Um, and Garifuna Settlement Day is one such holiday that we celebrate every year to honor the Garifuna people and the Garifuna culture. Moving on here, um, so Belize is, this is my favorite part of the webinar. Uh, Belize is because of the diversity that we have here, there's a multitude of different people who have come and made Belize their forever home. Uh, and so what this means is there's a mixture of different, um, again, cultures and cross-sharing for ideas, um, especially when it comes to food. So we do want to talk a little bit about the different dining opportunities, um, dining areas, places to visit to get a quick meal uh, to a romantic dinner here on Ambergas Key. Um, we have Live Organic Lounge. This is a uh, a really nice new place that has recently opened um, on the island and they use a lot of um, traditional foods, uh, traditional ingredients to create artisanal products. Uh, so um, again, we, we've visited this place a couple of times and you will find anything from um, tortillas being made with uh, a lot of different seasonings and curries in there um, and just really, really nice um, drink mixes that are available to you. This is one of the areas that are located right downtown. Um, and I know a lot of the folks on our team have been able to visit there um, uh, throughout the different um, days of the week. Giotto Sushi Bar. So again, jumping into another set of um, type of cuisine that's available on the island. If you're into sushi, Japanese cuisine on a whole, ramen bowls, again, quick and easy meals. Uh, Giotto is one of the um, premier spots to actually venture off to and have uh, a quick sushi meal or a uh, ramen bowl. Um, they also offer a lot of different teas, um, on site um, and on this property specifically, there's a lot of different vendors that have several many different types of food that are available to you, uh, whether you're going in for a quick bite during lunch or wanting that romantic dinner in the evening time. Yeah, and then we also have Blue Water Grill. 
Um, you've probably heard of this once or twice if you've been in Belize, or you probably visited. It's a nice area by the beach that you're able to have nice views of the sea. Um, and it's usually known for having more of the, the seafood cuisine. So you get to have some grilled fish, some grilled lobster, um, if you're looking for that. And they also have uh, sushi on Tuesdays and Fridays or Thursdays, if I'm not mistaken. And so they have quite a, a, a mixed menu there, but it's delicious Nandoe. Um, and in speaking to just having available opportunities that are available to you on the island, I'm actually not from San Pedro. I come from Western Belize. Um, I came to live out here a couple of months ago to experience San Pedro life um, and life on Ambergiski. And it's been really, really, it's been an experience on a whole, um, just having to um, not only work from home, work in the office, but finding really nice, quaint quiet spots to get the job done um, having that fast internet speed that connection there um, and and getting that quick bite i know different members on our team rachel um gian different members um, from the team have had this similar experience um, i don't know rachel if you want to talk about that a little bit on your end uh, when it comes to just working away from um, the typical desk life of course, and I'm back in the office now. It was a quick five minutes into uh, into uh, our key financial building office over here. So our, my background may have changed a little bit, but can you see it? No, I'm saying, I'm saying no over here. Um, okay, well, I'll try one more time. I don't know if it was going through before. And I don't even know if it's on. No, it's black for some reason. Huh. There, All right, well, we I go. don't know. Are we back? Is it on me or is it on Mary? I can't even see it's on you. Okay. okay, perfect. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys, for your technological help. I don't know what was happening there. But, you know, Belize is a place that I've definitely found has become a more popular location uh, within Latin America for people who are digital nomads. You know, when I first started with ECI development back in 2012, I didn't really ever hear the term digital nomad. At that point, I left um, I left my home in the States, moved down to Nicaragua, and I was working in a Nicaraguan office. But after some time, I realized Nicaragua wasn't for me, and I was splitting my time between various destinations. I was living in New Orleans a little bit. I was visiting family in New York. I was coming down here to Belize often and was really adopting this digital nomad life that a lot of people are talking about now. And if you're not familiar with what that concept is, a digital nomad is somebody who's able to essentially do their job from anywhere. You can work remotely. You can open up your laptop, your phone, and get your job done. And so I never really realized that that's what it was, but I was still able to go to these various places. I was, I remember being in Thailand for two or three weeks and still getting my job done. And so there's this really unique concept now that a lot of people are understanding, especially with COVID over the last year and a half and a lot of jobs going remote and you know, mandating that their, their workers work from home. So when the border reopened here in October, I ended up meeting a lot of new faces, people I'd never seen on the island before. And what they were saying to me is, hey, we're able to work from anywhere now. So they were down here for a month or two. Some friends I met who were supposed to just be here for a month ended up staying for six, seven months because they were getting their job done and they were doing it well, but they had a great view of the Caribbean that we just saw before and were still able to accomplish everything that they needed to accomplish. So Belize is a great spot for that. If you're not working for a Belizean company, if you're doing your job truly remotely for a company in the States or anywhere else besides Belize, uh, that's okay. The moment you try try to get a job here in Belize, it's going to be a lot more difficult. You do need to have a work permit in order to do that. Uh, it, 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 it can be a little bit of a process. I would highly recommend finding somebody to help you with that. Uh, but you just need to find a job that essentially is, um, is not, I'm trying to find the best way to say that, uh, that you don't want to take a job away from a Belizean. So if you're coming in as a foreigner, you're, you're not supposed to be coming in to bartend or uh, you know, to be a marketing manager, because we have a Michael Fuller for that. We have Maribel at our bar to, uh, to, to manage the bar. You really need to come in and bring a skill set that's either not trained or taught here in the country. And so if you're coming in and looking for a job um, in, in country, in Belize, know that it's going to be a lot more difficult. And chances are uh, it's going to be very different in terms of what your pay or your income is, especially if you're used to U.S. standards, your cost of living in the United States is substantially higher. Uh, your cost of living here will be reduced substantially, but just understand that too. But I would say if you're able to work remotely, get on that laptop now, especially here on Ambergris Key, 
fiber optics internet is prevalent. I mean, pretty much all across the places you'd be going here in San Pedro town for sure. Our office, um, I mean, right now, I think we have 10 people in this office over here, right next door in the other office, another 10 people. Um, and our business operates, our business operates here on Ambergris Key. So we need good internet. I understand that. I get questions all the time from people saying, well, how's the internet? I need to do my job. I get it. I do too. Our team does too. And it's great. That's why we have offices here. Um, I can tell you when I first started coming in 2012, most of the people who moved here were truly retirees, people who did not work anymore. And the reason for that is internet was horrible. Um, the internet was, was down half of the time. It was really expensive to call at that time. There was no WhatsApp. I know yesterday there was no WhatsApp or Facebook either. So it felt like we we're back in 2012, but at least we had telegram and signal and great Wi-Fi to do emails. Uh, but it was, it's, it's come a really long way over the last 10 years, uh, the progress here in terms of infrastructure and also just the general number of younger people living here in country and, and spending significant time in country. And I think one of my favorite parts about living on Ambergris Key is the fact that the people are so friendly. It's so easy to meet people. If you're someone who's social and you thrive from being in social settings, this could be a great place for you. If you're someone who likes to hermit away, you're able to do that too. There are many secluded beaches and, and private places you can go in order to have your, your alone time, but there's really something here for, uh, for everyone generally. And you know, especially on the island, this is an island where we are. We live on an island. It's a small population, 15 to 20,000 people, depending on the time of year. And it is probably going to happen to you where you get island fever. So the best part is you can hop on that ferry, that water taxi where I showed you where the station is, or go to Tropic or Maya Air, hop on a, on a, a Cessna caravan, be on the mainland in 15 minutes, and go check out the jungles like Michael was just showing. I know something for me, usually once a month I have to get off the island for a, a weekend, and I'll go check out the jungles or go explore another part of the country, and there's just so much here to explore and to see. So um, I know you asked about digital nomads and we're going in all sorts of directions here, but <laughs> I just want to mention that it's a great place to be uh, for people who are working remotely, even for those who are retirees or part-time, uh, we're, we're finding just a really great community of people. And when you do find that group of other digital nomads, it's great because they're working Monday through Friday as well. They're typically working eight or nine to, to four or five. So they're all busy during the day. And then at night, you can go grab dinner. Weekends, you're able to do fun things. So it doesn't feel like you're missing out on the fun things either too, which is, which is good. But a really cool place for people to be uh, and to really adopt that, that digital nomad sort of country and, and culture. And again, if you're planning to live here and work for a Belizean company, you do need to go through the work permit process. Um, that is an annual renewal every year. You need to get a new work permit that legally allows you to do business and work in the country. Um, if you're working just remotely for a company that's not based in Belize, there's a lot more flexibility with that. So just wanted to uh, to get that noted here since I know we have folks all across the board who are looking at different things. Thank you so much, Rachel. Um, it, it's really great, like Rachel mentioned, not having to be fettered to a desk um, and, and being able to pop open your laptop on Secret Beach uh, <laughs> while you're enjoying some really nice ocean and sunset views. Uh, moving on here, we do want to, so there's, like, like we've mentioned, there's tons of opportunities, tons of places to visit, tons of dining opportunities, um, some even on site at our Grand Bayman um, Best Western property. Gun Bayman Gardens uh, at the pool side, we're able to enjoy our really nice, um, it's, it's quite a big pool, uh, different areas for the family uh, and for folks who are wanting to swim with the swim bar coming along really nicely and the bar and restaurant on the side there. Um, there's, if you're a chocolate person like myself, um, there is a lot of um, chocolate cacao being grown in the country. So we do make our own chocolate here. Um, you can get from the chocolate nubs to the, the cacao bean nubs to actual um, dark chocolate, milk chocolate to different grades of chocolate that you would like. Um, we do have for more information on all of this type of information, just general uh, country information, how to, um, uh, learn more about your investment opportunities that are available to you or, or residency options that are available to you. We do have our consumer resource guide. Um, if you would like a copy of this, please do reach out to us at webinar at ecidevelopment.com. And as Jen mentioned, we will have somebody reach out to you uh, to answer all of your questions and also give uh, provide you with that free resource.
And uh, we want to, like I said, we've been talking about, you want to follow the trends. Um, when it comes to following the trends, San Pedro has definitely been there. It has been the forerunner of tourism in Belize. And uh, we have, Belize in general has had an increase in airlift going from Copa now, direct flight from Panama to Belize, direct flights from LA. Uh, and there's more to come in Belize as we go high. Um, record high tourism in Belize in 2019. Uh, we've had probably one of the highest overnight tourism in Belize. And we also have hotel brands arriving like the Marriott and the Best Western coming uh, over to the country. Uh, so we do want to just jump through some of these slides pretty quickly here to give you guys a full understanding of how the country, uh, how San Pedro really used to look. As Gian mentioned uh, a couple minutes ago that um, San Pedro is a lot like what Key Calker is like today. Of course, there's a lot of development happening on the country, uh, but here's a photo of the past and what San Pedro looks like now. So as you can see, there's a ton of development happening uh, throughout the entire island of Ambergiski, not just San Pedro town. Um, and uh, People are wanting to invest and look into Belize a lot more because of tourism, because of that return of investment, because of the easy um, going lifestyle, especially when it comes to retiring in a new country um, and some of the amenities that are available to you um, very conveniently. Um, again, this is just another uh, full scope of what the island looks like now, as you can see, um, there are a lot of nuggets, especially at our Grand Bayman property, where you'll still find a lot of greenery, a lot of wildlife, you can see a lot of birds, if you're a birder, um, like bird watching, um, you can see a lot of bird activity happening out there. There was a huge iguana on site the other day, <laughs> uh, which was really nice to see, uh, just thriving wildlife, just roaming freely. Uh, on the island. So don't be afraid or startled that there's a lot of development happening there um, on the island. And, uh, uh, and just so sorry, Michael, Michael, and just to <laughs> elaborate a bit more on that, at the gardens, I was staying in uh, uh, in Rachel's uh, apartment there at the Grand Bayman when she wasn't here, and uh, there was an owl literally right in front of the balcony, a, a little owl that used to come by at the end of every day just to come in and say hi. <laughs> and uh, we take pictures of the owl. And so, like Michael said, there's quite a lot of marine life, not only in the ocean, but out uh, as well on the island. A lot of wildlife, yeah. Um, as in terms of the air flights, um, we, there, there has been a lot of development. Again, this is an old photo here, but uh, Tropic Air and Maya Island Air are fully functioning um, flights that are available domestically um, throughout the country um, and are able to take you from the island to the mainland in just a couple of minutes, a couple of short minutes, nothing too long, um, and very, very safe um, air, air, airplanes. Uh, we do have one more poll for you guys here for the day. Um, we would like to know from all of you, where in Belize are two-thirds of the overnight visitors heading? Is it Placentia, Curzal, Ambergiski, or the Cayo District? Do let us know your answers in the comment section, in the Q&A section there below. Um, as we've been talking about, we've been talking about Ambergiski a lot, but there are a lot more popular tourist and vacation destinations uh, throughout the country. I see a lot of people typing in C here, and you guys are not wrong uh, with 70% of the tourism of the entire country coming on to Ambergiski. Uh, we do want to mention though that Placencia Corozal and the Kaya District are also some of those really nice mainland spots that you can go and venture off to, to get off the island and experience some more activities that are available to you within the country. Um, this is also one of my favorite parts of the webinar here, uh, the concept of volunteerism. Uh, so a lot of people over the years um, have been coming into Belize to do a lot of charitable work. Um, our company uh, works with a lot of different charities, different corporations, different clubs on the island, on mainland um, that we like to give back to. One such um, is ACs, which deals with a lot of wildlife, uh, the crocodiles on the island. Um, and as our contribution, when we do um, offer to folks um, that 
ACES gets back some of that as a return to help with the uh, crocodile rescue program that they have going on there. Uh, we do have other programs such as Rotaract. Um, about two weekends ago, I think it was, uh, we did a beach cleanup near the um, uh, the coast of San Pedro, and we like to engage in different activities like that with different clubs. Um, we also have the Pack for Purpose program going on for folks that are visiting the country for the first time or just coming into the country uh, um, on different occasions and reserving a little bit of space in their suitcase to provide school supplies um, that we then donate to the different schools throughout um, Burgess Key, but also on the mainland as well. So if volunteerism and charitable work is something that is um, that you're looking for, there are definitely different options that are available to you. Again, just reach out to us at webinar at ecidevelopment.com and we are able to provide you with more information on that. Uh, I I was not mistaken there. I was going to say we had one more question, but this is actually the results um, of the different polls earlier. So six districts um, in the country, Car Garifano Settlement Day was the holiday that we celebrate on the 19th and Ambergiski, as you all have just mentioned, is the number one uh, spot for overnight stays within the entire country. So as you can see here on the map, uh, this is just a quick snapshot off the island uh, where our different um, properties are located. We have Tess on the Bayward, uh, Bay side of the island um, where it's a, it's a little bit away from town, but still convenient. There's a, it's a quick two, three minute boat ride. It's about, a, <laughs> it's about a five minute boat ride. And it's on what we call the west side of the island or on the leeward side. And so if you see where the Marriott property is, that's where the sea is. Um, that's a beach side. We have the Best Western, which is just a stone's throw away from the beach. And then we have the Tess all the way on the west side, um, as Michael mentioned. It's only about a five minute and boat ride to the west from uh, um, uh, the main island. And it's, it's a quite unique place because it's as if though you're in an island within an island. And so it's a nice place that if you want to uh, be away from the hustle and bustle of town, but yet just be a short five minute boat ride away, that's it's a really nice place. Uh, to be. And again, if you guys want to learn more um, about Belize, you can always request a digital copy of our Belize handbook. Uh, you can just say handbook Belize at webinar at ecidevelopment.com and uh, one of our teams would be more than happy to send over the digital copy. And uh, once more, we have our consumer resource guide. Uh, within this consumer resource guide, you have those 15 questions that you must ask the first time you're looking at property overseas. It's a really, really, really great resource um, if this is your first time uh, looking at property overseas. <clears throat> Great. Uh, we are. We have a couple more minutes before we finish off here, folks. But we do want to open up the question and answer portion of this presentation. So do let us know if you have any pressing questions here. I see Harry is saying that there are a lot of hammerhead sharks inside the blue hole. You are yes. not wrong there, sir. <laughs> um, the blue hole. It's it's actually one of um, when when you're on a guided tour, one of the nicest spots to do some snorkeling, um, especially around the atoll around. Uh, so Blue Hole, there's an atoll um, that's around there and you're able to see some marine life around that. Um, but to do, indeed, um, lower or, or deeper in the waters of the Blue Hole, Blue you hole. will find um, hammerhead sharks, <laughs> some sea turtles um, and different marine life there. Um, I've seen Harry say that he's dived there so several several times before. Yes, uh, we're we're glad that you have been able to experience that, Harry. It's it's great, uh, and the Blue Hole is a great area to go to. It's within the Lighthouse Reef Atoll that Michael was mentioning, and you do have three stops: the Blue Hole itself, you have Half Moon Key or Half Moon Key Wall, um, that is probably one of the best diving places that you'll get to, and then you also have the aquarium there. I do see here, Cindy is asking about current COVID protocols. So um, getting in the country when it comes to receiving a test, you are required to have a, I believe it's a rapid test to mm -hmm. enter the country, a, a negative rapid test. Um, and wearing your mask is, um, it's not, you're, you're needing to wear your mask around town um, when you're traveling. However, when you're at, 
uh, when you're dining out at your table, doing activities like snorkeling um, and, and going to the different activities throughout the country, you're not required at that point to wear it. We like to have a saying here, the only mask that's required is when you're snorkeling um, and doing diving in the country, uh, but we can definitely provide you with a full list of those um, COVID protocols, Cindy, um, and we can reach out to you to provide those um, in after the webinar. I see Patty yep. here. Oh, and I'm also going to just mention, guys, um, follow the Belize Tourism Board, Belize Tourism Board website. It's a great way for you to stay in touch with what's going on. As you probably know, things are just changing regularly and all the time. So it's not a bad idea to have that bookmarked on your page. So when you are ready to visit, you can just take a look and and see what that says there. Belize Tourism Board, they do a great job at, at keeping you updated so you know exactly what you need in order to come into the country. Thank you, Rachel. I see Patty here um, saying that she really enjoyed the webinar today, but she has a question, where is Seva? <laughs> uh, so for <laughs> folks on the line who may not know what Seva is or who Seva is, Seva is my little pup. She is taking probably taking a nap right now um, uh, because it's such a nice day out. So she's probably just enjoying the island life and, and kicking it back and having <laughs> some laid back time. Um, Claude is asking, what do you do during hurricane? So hurricane season normally starts around July through November of every year. Uh, so far this year, there has not been any hurricanes that have affected the country. Uh, but during those times, um, uh, the country normally prepares uh, with, with shutters, the normal protocols that are um, required when a hurricane approaches. Um, and just do know that for all of our construction um, of our different projects and properties that we have available on the island, these are made to standards. So they're not going anywhere. They're not going to blow away in any hurricane winds um, and are able to um, withstand the weather situation there. Uh, Nicole is asking, can you talk a little about a little about property taxes and how those apply to properties? Uh, Rachel, do you want to jump in there? Sure. Sure, you got it. And I think that my video may be lagging just a little bit. So let me know if you can see me, if you can see Mary, if you can't see anyone. Jay's Wait, over there you. too. So you, you, you can see me? Or no? Yeah, I took it back again. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't know. Yeah, no. <laughs> All right. I'm going to just turn video off. I don't know what's going on over here. But yes, property taxes. So property tax is typically one to one and a half percent of the assessed value of the land. So it's the of the undeveloped land. So it's not necessarily what's built on top of it. It's of the un uh, the undeveloped land. So in a sense, it's a little arbitrary. So um, it just uh, it does tend to be less expensive than in North America. I can tell you that. I know I have a couple acres in the Belize mainland, and it's ten Belize dollars a year. So it's five U.S. dollars. Um, nothing built on it, but land here on Ambergris Key does have more value than land on the mainland because we're on an island, especially when you're in the developed areas. So here, um, I can tell you from experience, my condo is about 500 square feet, and it's about 350 U.S. dollars a year. Um, that's about standard for what I found for one bedrooms, two bedrooms, typically about 600 US dollars a year, three bedrooms, about 850, 900 dollars a year. Uh, and that's all US. So it just kind of depends. It is a little arbitrary, uh, but you don't really know what that exact number is. And if you're buying a condo, for example, pre construction condo, you don't really know what that is until the condo is completed. Uh, but it's, it's really minimal compared to other parts of the world. Thank you, Rachel. I see Claude's asking about, well, he did mention here about a property being flooded during high tide, um, if that's a major issue. It's really dependent on where exactly um, the location of this property was. Um, a lot of the country, especially on the mainland, is below sea level, but a lot of the construction is built with that in mind, um, ensuring that um, there is a uh, proper construction for to to not or to rather avoid this happening during high tide and also yep. when it comes to the high tide the, the tide doesn't really change that much it's not like we experience five six foot tide difference it's a couple of inches and usually when it comes to the flooding it's usually due to excessive rain during the rainy season and like michael said um for this hurricane season we haven't seen much rain just a few drizzles here and there and so uh, we haven't seen much of that flooding this year yeah, and I'm going to give you all a piece of advice. If you've never lived in a place that can be in the hurricane zone, 
So here in Belize, we know that we're in a hurricane zone and you know, Florida's in a hurricane zone, parts of Texas are, Louisiana. And so what you do if you're in an area like that is you make sure you're building to the elements. And Gian and Michael just mentioned that we know we're in a hurricane zone. So typically you'll see that construction of a well-built property is built a little elevated, right? It's not built right there on the ground. You're typically three, four feet, especially where we are on the island. The highest point on this island, if you're not counting the bridge uh, and you're not counting up, up, up north um, by Rocky Point, but it's about, I mean, it's about three feet when you're in the San Pedro town area. So typically you'll find, um, and the highest storm surge was about three feet. So typically what you'll find is homes are built a little bit more elevated than that. Typically they're 10, they could be 10 feet. If it's a single standing home, if it's a condo building, they typically start three, four feet above, um, above the ground level there. So bear that in mind. Also make sure you're looking at a structure that's built out of uh, concrete and you know, cinder block rebar pilings down to the bedrock. All of that is really important in terms of construction. And here you're, you're I can tell you're going to find some really cute, charming wooden homes uh, but, you know, ask yourself, ask the developer, are they hurricane proof? They may be really cute, but they may also be blown away in the wind if a, a strong enough hurricane came through. So just make sure you're understanding what you're buying. You can get insurance on your property. Uh, typically, insurance is three to four times more expensive for a wooden structure uh, compared to a, a, a property that's built with concrete and, and cinder blocks and pilings down to the bedrock. But those are great due diligence questions for you to ask if you are considering property here. Uh, on the island, and not just the island, but across the, across the country generally. Oh, it sounds like we lost you there, Rachel. Um, oh. I'm not sure if you went back on mute, actually. Sorry, can, can you hear me? So yeah, that, that's it oh, there. I'm going, to step, I'm going to hop off my soapbox there. I think there's a lot of great questions and due diligence questions that for those of you who are considering ownership of real estate in this part of the world that you should ask. Michael and Gian have both mentioned the consumer resource guide that you see there on the screen. Reach out to us and request it. It's a complimentary resource. It was based on our CEO's 25 plus years of experience of working in the region. And he says he paid the tuition so that you guys don't have to, so that you can ask the questions like, is the condo plumbed for hot water? A great question that we wouldn't think to ask in North America that you do need to ask when you're, when you're moving down to Central America and Latin America generally. Um, you know, I know many of us like washers and dryers. Dryers are not necessarily standard here. Like in Europe, they're not necessarily standard. So if you want that dryer and you want it to be part of your construction, your home that's being constructed, you need to make sure that it is being uh, installed and included. So little things like that go a really long way. I saw a couple of you have already requested it via email here. I'm taking a look at my email. Some of you, though, it looks like a lot of you still need to, uh, to request that and get that sent to your email. A great copy, digital copy will be emailed over to you to go through and just keep that handy as you are going through your diligence process. Yep, uh, we will be reaching out to you folks um, who have um, requested that. Again, just reach out to us at webinar at ecidevelopment.com and we will provide you not only with the consumer resource guide, but also with the Belize handbook so that you can find out a lot more information. I do want to thank all of you for joining us today for the Belize 102 webinar. Do look out uh, for our upcoming webinars that are happening uh, for the rest of the month of October, talking a little bit more about Belize, the lifestyle here and our different investment opportunities available to you now. Um, I want to thank Gian and Rachel for joining us on the webinar today. Uh, Gian, do you have any last words before we pop off here? Um, I just want to say thank you guys very much for taking the time off of your very, very busy day to hear us talk about Belize. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys over here and uh, hopefully taking you guys out, maybe diving, snorkeling, or joining you guys on any adventures you're planning on doing in Belize. Thank you. And Rachel, do you have any final words? Not at all. You guys have done a fantastic job. Thank you for the great information. I learned something new from the both of you today. So thank you for that. Uh, always good to hear from the local perspectives where they recommend and what they would suggest doing. And Gian, I will make sure that I am in touch with you when I want to go diving. It's been a few years, so I'll probably need a refresher. Absolutely. Awesome. But, Thank you, everybody, and, and thank you guys. Have a, a really great evening. And also, as Michael mentioned, we're going to send the recording to you. Please check your spam in the next hour and a half, two hours. If you don't see an email from us, we just want to ensure that there are super smooth conver conversations and connections between us. But I do know sometimes we end up in the spam box. So look out for our emails, and uh, we look forward to showing you around here on Ambergris. Bye-bye.
Thank you, folks. Have a good rest of your day or a good start today, and we'll see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.